In today's session, the discussion will be on right to constitutional remedy. It is one of the most important fundamental right as enumerated in part 3 of Indian constitution. Actually, the question before the members of the constituent assembly was whether the list of fundamental rights should be included in the constitution. Indian leaders rejected the British notion of rights. They decided to include fundamental rights in the main part of the constitution. In every document since 1895, the Indians proclaimed that British view of rights as enunciated by A. V. Dicey was not enough for the Indians. They held such opinion because they felt that British will, uh, would ultimately deny the Indians of their rights. They were actually suspicious of the intention of the British rulers regarding the liberty of the people of India. In 1934, the British Joint Parliamentary Committee refused to include a list of rights in the 1935 Government of India Act. Only in 1946, the British government tacitly acknowledged the claim of the Indian leaders to include the list of fundamental rights in the body of the constitution. They held the validity of Indian view that the list of fundamental rights be included in the constitution following the suggestion of the cabinet mission plan. The Fundamental Rights Subcommittee met uh, for the first time on 27th February 1947 and in the meetings of the members of the subcommittee, it was decided that the fundamental rights should be justiciable and they must be included in the main body of the constitution so that it becomes possible to protect the individual freedom and protect individual liberty from any arbitrary action taken by the government. Thus, they not only included the fundamental rights in the constitution, but also tried to find out a device, a mechanism for protection of these fundamental rights. They followed British device of prerogative rates. And K. M. Munshi, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, Aladi Krishna Swami Iyer all strongly and actively favored the inclusion of the right to constitutional remedy within the main text of fundamental rights. Aladi Krishna Swami Iyer suggested that all the high courts and the Supreme Court should have the power to issue rates of habeas corpus. It was also said that parliament could, uh, should have the power to empower any court in India to issue these writs. These writs were treated as the cornerstone of liberty and freedom for the citizens of India. As we all know that abstract declaration of rights are useless unless they are being backed by supportive mechanisms to make them effective. The power of the court to enforce obedience to fundamental rights depends not only upon the impartiality and independence of the judiciary. It, um, uh, is, it must also have adequate uh, instruments to act as protector and guarantor of fundamental rights. As we know that Supreme Court is called the protector and guardian of the fundamental rights of the citizens of India, as it can act against any sort of infringement of or violation of these rights. Article 13 of the Constitution says that any act of the executive or of the legislature which takes away or abridges any of these rights shall be void, and the courts are empowered to declare it as void. Apart from this, the judiciary has been armed with the power to issue writs under Article 32 
and Article 226 for enforcement of fundamental rights. Article 32, as per Article 32, the Supreme Court can issue reads and as per Article 226, the High Courts are empowered to issue these reads. Article 32 of Indian Constitution thus provides for constitutional remedies against violation or transgression of fundamental rights. The fundamental rights are of highest importance to the individuals as they are the means for the development of fullest self of the citizens of India. They are the basic conditions for the fullest development of personality of all the people of India. It is the sacred duty of the state, therefore, is to protect these fundamental rights. The reflection of this view can be seen in Article 32 of the Indian Constitution. Article 32, which is itself a fundamental right, reads like this. Article 32, Clause 1 states that the right to move the Supreme Court by appropriate proceedings for the enforcement of the rights conferred by this part is guaranteed. Article 32, Clause 2 says, that the Supreme Court shall have the power to issue directions or orders or writs, including writs in the nature of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, quo warranto, and certiorari, which, whichever may be appropriate for the enforcement of any of this right conferred by this part. Article 32 clause 3 says that without prejudice to the powers conferred on the Supreme Court by clauses 1 and 2, Parliament may by law empower any other court to exercise within its local limits or, uh, or its jurisdiction all or any of the powers exercisable by the Supreme Court under clause 2. Article 32 clause 4 reads like this, the right guaranteed by this article shall not be suspended except as otherwise provided for by this constitution. Thus, Article 32 which was referred to as the very soul of the constitution by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar provides for constitutional remedies against violation of fundamental rights as being enumerated in part 3 of the constitution. The citizens are given the right to seek redressal from the Supreme Court in case of transgression of fundamental rights. The Supreme Court thus is constituted as the protector and guarantor of fundamental rights. As has been mentioned earlier that the right to constitutional remedy is itself a fundamental right. Besides the Supreme Court, the High Courts also have been given a role to uh, protect the fundamental rights. Under Article 226, the High Court can, high courts can also issue the reads for protection of fundamental rights, for enforcement of the rights of the citizens within the jurisdiction of their concerned area. But there is a subtle difference. But uh, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court and the High Courts in matter of issue of the reads are slightly different. Uh, according to Article 32 of the Constitution, the Supreme Court can issue rights only in case of infringement of any fundamental right enumerated in Part 3 of the Constitution. Contrarily, High Courts can issue rates. The same rates can be issued by the High Courts not only against violation of fundamental rights but also for enforcement of any ordinary law, uh, ordinary uh, rights protected by any ordinary law or other legal mechanisms. Further, 
the jurisdiction or uh, of the high courts is quite limited it is only uh, within the territory of the state concerned whereas the supreme court's competence is coterminous with the territory of india as a whole in case of transgression of fundamental rights the supreme court or the high courts may issue sim, uh, five writs on almost similar grounds these writs are habeas corpus mandamus prohibition certiorari and quo warranto let us have a focus on these writs uh, first of all let us start with what are writs writs are orders or directives or directions given by the supreme court or the high courts as the case may be for enforcement of fundamental rights or certain ordinary rights that is by issuing writs the judiciary these courts can issue directions stating uh, the administrative authority quasi administrative authority or judicial or quasi judicial authority to do or not to do certain actions which goes against the very spirit of fundamental rights let us discuss these writs habeas corpus habeas corpus literally means to have a body hence no man can be detained illegally whenever a man is detained a person is detained he must be produced before the court the nearest court within 24 hours this writ is a powerful safeguard against arbitrary arrest and detention the underlying principle behind the writ of habeas corpus is thus that a person must get protection against any sort of arbitrary or unlawful detention it originated from the brit english legal system and has been adopted in many countries mandamus mandamus means command it calls upon public servants or some quasi public servants to perform some duties mandamus can be issued against the government also in compliance with articles 226 and article 361 in which it has been stated that government a file can be a case can be filed against the government for negligence of its duty thus mandamus is issued against dereliction of duty the writ of mandamus is an important jurisdictional remedy in which an order is passed on by a superior institution to a supplementary or subordinate court or authority to either take a particular form of action or refrain from doing it and it is thus backed by backed with legal rights and reasoning prohibition prohibition is a writ which is issued by the supreme court or the uh, or high court to prohibit lower courts from proceeding with a case which is beyond its jurisdiction that is to prohibit inferior courts under them to overstep their jurisdiction there is a difference between mandamus and prohibition mandamus can be issued against any administrative authority or quasi administrative authority but prohibition can be issued only against judicial or quasi judicial authority by is issuing mandamus the supreme court or high court give direction for performing certain duties it is the normal scenario when mandamus is issued uh, directing for performing certain duties whereas uh, so far as prohibition is concerned it is issued for restraining the lower courts from doing anything which is beyond its jurisdiction certiorari certiorari is another important writ it enables a superior court 
to compel inferior court to submit records of proceedings to the higher court. Certiorari is issued at later stage, but they can be issued on similar grounds. Both certiorari and prohibition aim to ensure proper functioning of the lower courts and to keep the lower courts within their specified jurisdictional limits. The Supreme Court in Surya Dev Rai versus Ramchandar Rai and others case has explained the meaning, scope and ambit of the writ of certiorari. The limit of the jurisdiction of High Court in issuing the writ of certiorari was considered by this court in Hari Vishnu Kamath versus Ahmed Isaac 1955 case and the following four propositions were laid down on the basis of these verdicts. 1. Satyorari will be issued for correcting errors of jurisdiction so that the courts are refrained from trespassing its jurisdiction or going beyond its limits of jurisdiction. 2. Satyorari will also be issued when the court or tribunal acts illegally in the exercise of its undoubted jurisdiction and when it decides without giving an opportunity to the parties to be heard or violates the principles of natural justice. 3. The court issuing a writ of certiorari acts in exercise of supervisory role. That is, it has got a supervisory role. It cannot exercise in its capacity of being an appellate judiciary. One co uh, consequence of this is that the court will not review findings of fact reached by the inferior courts or by the tribunal, even if these, uh, these facts are erroneous. An error, fourth proposition was that an error in the decision or determination itself may also be amenable to a writ of certiorari if it is a manifest error apparent on the face of proceeding. For example, when it is based on clear ignorance or disregard of the provisions of law. In other words, it is a patent error which can be corrected by certiorari, but not a mere wrong decision. Thus, there is a uh, these are the limits set to issuing certiorari. The fifth uh, read was, uh, is quo warranto. Quo warranto literally means by what right. This read is issued to determine the legality of a person's claim to public office. The purpose of this writ is to prevent usurpation of a public office by an undesirable or unqualified person. A writ of quo warranto is not a petition. It is rather a notice of demand issued by a demandant to a respondent claiming that so, uh, claiming that some delegated power is not being vested with that particular person. It is filed with a court of competent jurisdiction to hold a hearing within 3 to 20 days depending on the distance of the respondent to the court. That is, respondent must be present within with adequate proof of his authority to execute his claimed powers within 3 to 20 days. There are certain limitations to this right. These limitations are the right to constitutional remedy under Article 32 may be restricted by imposition of Article 33. Article 33 empowers the Parliament to modify the application of fundamental rights to armed forces and the police to ensure proper discharge of their duties. Second limitation is like this. 
under Article 34, during the operation of martial law in any area, the Parliament may indemnify any person in the service of the central or a state government for acts for maintenance or restoration of law and order. Thirdly, during emergency, proclaimed under Article 30, 352 at the, of the Constitution, the fundamental rights guaranteed to all the citizens of India will remain suspended. Article 358 thus authorizes the Parliament to restrict fundamental rights guaranteed by Article 19 during the proclamation of national emergency under Article 352. Article 359 empowers the President to, uh, to suspend the right to move the court for restoration of fundamental rights. In other words, Article 359 empowers the President to suspend Article 32 of the Constitution. Such an order, however, is to be submitted to the Parliament and is subject to the approval of the Parliament by its full strength. The right to constitutional remedy was created as one of the main fundamental rights because the constitution recognized the need to protect the rights of the citizens. In case of any of the fundamental rights being uh, any of the citizens being deprived or denied uh, of any of the fundamental right, he or she can move the court for enforcement of its rights. And the court issues reads as the case may be for enforcement or uh, against infringement of these uh, of uh, his rights. Apart from these reads, there are other mechanisms too, like the National Commission for Minorities. It is a flexible, autonomous body created by Government of India for protection of rights of the minorities. There is the National Commission for Women, which is functioning since 1992 for uh, protection of the rights of women. There is National Commission for Scheduled Tribes, which protects the interest of scheduled tribes. The government will monitor and safeguard the rights of scheduled tribes and offer opportunities in the processes of socio-economic development in terms of employment and also in terms of gaining medical and educational uh, relief. There are also human rights commissions, both central and the states. However, these instruments are yet to be developed fully. As stated uh, earlier, that the Supreme Court has been assigned a special role as the protector and guarantor of fundamental rights by Article 32. Generally, when only the person affected may move the court for enforcement of his fundamental rights. But Supreme Court held that any person, even if his interest directly has not been affected, may move the court. This is called expansion of the right to be heard. It favors public interest litigation. In Gopalan v. State of Madras case, 1950, the Supreme Court took a very narrow approach, narrow view, while deciding on as to whether a detained person could be, uh, 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 a person's detention could be justified on the basis of procedure established by law. In 1967, in Goloknath case, Supreme Court held that the fundamental rights are beyond the reach of the parliament. In 1973, in Keshavananda Bharti case, Supreme Court came out with unique basic structure document. This basic structure doctrine was never clearly stated. That is, what exactly falls within the, what elements exactly fall within the parameter of basic structure is still under veil. It is still a vague issue. But fundamental rights, it is very clear that the list of fundamental rights does not, does never fall under this uh, basic, uh, in, in this basic structure document. The Supreme Court 
held that the parliament only cannot destroy these basic elements of fundamental features of the constitution. Fundamental rights were not included in one of the in 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 uh, in any of the list of the basic uh, features. Thus. Uh, leaders of the nation must, uh, must work out hard on these options of infringement of fundamental rights so that rights of the people, rights of the citizens are well protected and democracy of India get strengthened and, it, uh, and, and Indian citizens can uh, get a mature democracy.